I'm with Dr. Brian Shaw. He's a TMJ surgeon, dual degree down in St. Pete, Florida. He is uh, Dr. Mark Piper's partner, his new partner. He's been with him about a year. And Brian, tell us what's it been like uh, with COVID going on for you guys? Yeah, Nick, it's a, it's a scary new world um, right now. The state, as most people have seen on the news, has been hit um, sort of later in the curve than some other parts of the country because we were a bit slow to adopt the social distancing. And that's kind of tough to do in Florida. People are outside all the time with the nice weather and packing the beaches and out doing things, but eventually we got there and now we're starting to see a little bit of a flattening in the curve. What that means though to healthcare providers like us is um, we're basically shut down at this point. Uh, yeah. We are unable to do any type of surgery or patient intervention that isn't labeled an emergency. So for a maxillofacial surgeon, that, that's pretty much intractable pain, um, infections, facial fractures, things like that, which are things that Dr. Piper and I don't do a ton of anymore anyway. Uh, so for the most part, we are, we are not seeing patients face to face at this point. We have instituted a lot of telemedicine and have become pretty creative in finding ways to reach our patients and stay in close communication with them. And to a certain extent, Mark and I have thought this was uh, almost a good thing. Um, you know, it, it's forced us to get creative with patient interaction. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And, and you guys are primarily dealing with TMJ slash TMD slash orofacial pain patients, right? That is correct. Uh, the only other thing that we do in that spectrum, and we do a fair amount of it, is orthognathic surgery. Um, as, as you probably know, a lot of folks with TMJ pathology, um, it hits them early in life and it, and it does influence their growth pattern. So typically we do see secondary skeletal problems with these people that require more than just orthodontic intervention. We're oftentimes having to do osteotomies to get these people back up and running. Yeah, but that wouldn't be classified as emergent. I get it. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. not at all. So when you go back to work, what, what are you gonna be doing differently as far as uh, PPE and uh, the way you interact with patients? Yeah, so right off the bat, we are lucky. Uh, a lot of our dental colleagues um, are, and even surgical colleagues are doing in-office procedures that require or produce some level of aerosol. And with Mark and I, you know, we are seeing pre-op patients. So in other words, history and physical examinations and then post-operative patients. But all of our actual surgical intervention is done in the operating room um, under general anesthesia. So we're probably going to be following PPE mandates from hospital systems, uh, the, the government um, and higher levels. I don't think there's going to be a lot of room for interpretation on our end. Yeah. Um, we will simply be following, like everybody else in the hospital, what the country deems necessary at that time. Have you heard about the, uh, out of South Korea, a lot of the dental clinics remained open during the COVID uh, crisis, and they're vaporizing hypochlorous acid. Have you heard about that one? No, I have not. Uh, basically electrophoresis, salt water. They're using like distilled water and salt. They're passing a current through it, uh, precipitating out the sodium. And what's left is HOCL, which is like supposedly 80 times more virucidal than bleach. Mm -hmm. And they're throwing them in vaporizers. I, I'm thinking about adding that to when I open my office up. Um, they're basically, it's almost like, you know, you're spraying a pesticide across the crop. When I talk about a vaporizer, you know, sure, it's not, not sure. just, yeah. So they're what they've been walking around their clinics. They'll throw some of the hypochlorous acid in the vaporizer and they'll just kind of stream around, walk the halls, you know, and there's no residue. It's uh, safe for humans. You can breathe it in. It doesn't hurt anything. The pH is almost neutral, but it's wow. very virucidal. It has to do with the chemistry involved in the biochem. And they're also taking it in, uh, in bottle form and they're spraying it on the handles and what have you. They're doing their normal stuff but then they're doing that in addition. And they claim that not a single dental healthcare worker has become infected. 
Well, that's incredible information to have. I know yeah. that most dentists, as they're getting ramped up to try to start practicing again, are terrified not only of catching the virus, but what they should be doing to prevent their patients from infecting each other. Yep. So I, I think a technique like this, anything that can be done to help decrease the spread of this illness would be yep. wonderful. And it sounds like it's easy enough to do. Yep. I mean, I, I ran into this uh, online, a video out of, uh, out of South Korea. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link on this and I'll also send you the video. So awesome. interesting, you know, I, I have a degree in microbiology and I almost pursued that was my major too. Yeah, there yeah. you go. I uh -huh. love virology. I almost did a master's in it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, it's been 30 years. I'm an old guy now, but you know, I think a little bit different. You do too, right? We're both microbiology oh, yeah. guys. And <clears throat> the way I look at it, you know, the, if you, if you have a virus with a, it's a lipid bilayer, correct? Mm -hmm. on the outer shell and you have a certain thickness to the virus and you're wearing a mask i think the mask you know you you can't allow that in so, but it, most of us aren't going to have access to n95s right right or n100s or the, the even better ones so what's wrong with doubling up what's wrong with putting one and then another on top of it for example right right Absolutely. You know? And, it, you know, I think some of the worry is not necessarily going through the bulk of the mask, but going around it. Yes. So the fit. Um, I have a, a buddy in Chicago that just sent me this really cool thing he's doing with this 3D printer. Yeah. He has a facial scanning uh, app on his iPhone and he'll scan his face. He uploads it into his software as an STL file, and then he builds like he's building an implant guide, yeah. a mask uh, structure, like exo structure nice. with, a, with a rubber band type thing. Then he puts on his regular mask and he snaps this thing on top of it, nice. and it keeps it super tight. So there's no areas where things can get in around the outside. Now, of course, that hasn't been proven. But I think there's going to have to be creative things like that to take what we have already available to us. Well, what about simply going to a pharmacy and some of the uh, some of the dressing stuff that they they sell for orthopedics? Oh, absolutely. Clear tape, you know. I mean, yep. but but then again, you've got to temper this. You don't want to get people too paranoid. You know, right. you walk in looking like you're, you're kind of half-assing it. You know, what's the patient yeah, going to yeah. think? <laughs> yeah, they exactly. weren't worried, and now they're like, "What's wrong with you?" Right, you know. right, exactly. I don't want to catch what you have. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I hear you. All right. So, um, anyhow, so what else were you all talking about when it came to PPE? Um, you know, the, there's one guy in our group that sits on the ADA board, and the ADA is throwing all types of things out there, like lamellar negative air pressure flow in the mm -hmm. operatories. I mean, come on, you're going to have That's to tear your much. practice apart. That's too How much. How are people going to implement this? I mean, yeah. everyone's going to go bankrupt anyway and default on their loans if they don't let us start practicing again. And yeah. now you want people to build hospital grade operatories? No. I mean, it's no. bonkers. No. You know, something else I've been noticing is that it seems that all across the world, uh, the dental types that we're working or you know, have had emergent, I'm not seeing us guys like us having trouble. I'm seeing no. the medical types having, the medical types in the hospital, uh, I don't think they're as good at infection control as we are. That's exactly on the, uh, you're, are you on the core blog, the core airway blog? Uh -uh. I'll talk to Mark about that. We'll get you on, the, it's like a Jeff Rouse thing. Yeah. And it's sort of airway dentistry. And I'll tell you, I watch it from a distance because it gets pretty kooky yeah. sometimes. But people were talking about that yesterday. There was a long string of emails where people were saying, you know, dentists are very good at universal precautions. Yeah. And, and physicians, yeah, they walk in, they look in your mouth, they barely have a glove on half the time with a yeah. tongue depressor. You're coughing in their face, and the, especially the old timers. Yep. So I think, you know, we're a little bit more used to it. Um, yep. We're better at it. But yeah, that was a hot topic yesterday on the blog. Yeah, I think... Uh... I think I think we're going to be fine. I, I hope guess. so. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Brian. No, no problem. Thank you.